All right. Good evening and welcome, welcome everyone to the Book Writers Roundtable sponsored by alumnimatters.com. My name is Bryant Sowell. <clears throat> I'm a partner with the Alumni Advantage Group. And uh, here I'm excited to bring to you this presentation and discussion with an exciting panel of writers um, this evening. Uh, this is probably the first of a few series of events that we'll have, but this one particularly comes straight from the Alumni Circles Facebook group uh, community and is a topic of interest of the group. So we want to bring some members together to discuss and share their experiences with book writing and publishing. So we have tonight, uh, we have uh, Terry uh, Ellen Cross Davis. She's the author of A More Perfect Union, a, a widely recognized and awarded author uh, of that book and several other um, poetry pieces that she's written over the years. Uh, she's based out of um, Silver Spring, Maryland originally from Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, uh, alumni of Ohio University. Uh, we also have Welby Broadus, who is uh, based out of Akron, Ohio, and he is the author of uh, Leading Blind by, uh, for the Visually Impaired, and uh, he is from the University of Akron. And uh, we also have uh, uh, Tiffany Tichy, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, an alumni of UNC Charlotte, and uh, originally from Winston-Salem, is that right? Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So uh, excited to have her. She is the author is of a children's book called uh, What I Can Be, STEM Careers from A to Z. So excited. We got a diverse group here and a diverse group of experiences here. So we're excited to get into some of these questions uh, from uh, alumni circles group. But thank you all for being here, first of all. <laughs> all right. So so let's get into it right away, because uh, we know the folks want what they want to know here. So uh, the first question, uh, I'm going to go around the round table here and just ask a, a simple. Uh, we'll start with uh, Terry. Why did you publish a book? And did you self-publish and why did you go that route? Um, my first book Hank, came out in 2016 and it was published by a local um, DMV, District Maryland, Virginia, a local Virginia publisher um, by the name of Robert Guerin and his press is called Javal Press. Um, I had the manuscript, a third of it came from my thesis for my MFA at American University. Um, and the rest of it came from other poems that I created, you know, after post-grad. I had shot that manuscript out to a couple different contests. For me, I work in the poetry world. I run a poetry series as a full-time job for the Folger Shakespeare Library. And I've been in this job for like 16 years. So I, I, for me, I know the avenues of publishing in poetry and somewhat in literature overall. And I wanted to do a contest. I know that if you win a contest, you get the PR and the marketing of the contest behind you. And a lot of people tend to pay attention if it's an award-winning book. Right. Um, that said, I had, my, I had that first manuscript out for a lot of places. And I was actually at a reading in Virginia and the publisher approached me and said, I heard you had a manuscript. Wow. And I was wow. like, um, yes. So <laughs> I had to figure out bird in the hand or two in the bush. I was like, mm bird in the hand. Um, so, and that was one of the best decisions I've made. Um, so the book came out, it actually won the Ohio Anna uh, Poetry Award for 2017. Um, mm -hmm. And that led to just kind of more opportunities to go. I actually went to Ireland twice to read um, and do a whole literary tour there. They love poetry. Yay, Ireland. Um, and it, it, it gave me a lot of opportunities. And when the second book came around, um, and I will say in between all of these, I did a lot of residencies, mm -hmm. a lot of residencies because I invite poets. I'm always reading through bios and I see, oh, there's, you know, Swanee Writers Conference. Oh, there's Hedgebrook. Oh, and I'm a Cave Canem Fellow, which is an organization that supports Black poets and oh. has like over 400 fellows and has produced Pulitzer Prize winners and poet laureates and, you know, MacArthur Genius Grants. And, and so you end up being in the know with a lot of other Black poets. Um, right. So all that, you know, all those opportunities led to things. And by the time I had this manuscript for a more perfect union, I, um, it was like, oh, the end of the summer of 2018, 2019, 2019. 
And I had submitted it to about maybe six different, six or seven different contests for the fall. I just went ahead and made the investment because you can deduct that from your taxes. Um, and <laughs> these are the things I like to share. You know, right. folks need to know. You can deduct right. that as a writer on your taxes. Okay. And I happened, um, I got a call from Kathy, from the poet Kathy Fagan out of Ohio State University. And she told me like right at the end of the year that my manuscript had won the Charles B. Willer Poetry Prize nice. from Ohio State um, University's journal. And so that, and then shortly after, um, you know, the other things happened. I won a prize with the Poetry Society of American Book and so on. But those two, I know that for me, and again, I know, you know, for poetry and for fiction and all this, it's very different. But I know for me, in order for my book to be eligible for prizes, mm -hmm. it has to be published in a tradition by a traditional publisher. Okay. A okay. lot of prizes don't accept self-published work. Okay. That's and, a good point. And I also knew that by having, I went from a small press to a university press, okay. which meant that I then had a marketing and a press, you know, press release. And I had, you know, someone working on press and sending out those press releases mm -hmm. and, and actually putting me up for different prizes and all of this. Oh. Um, so I knew that there would be a manner of support from the publisher, but I did my research with both publishers. Yeah. And even with my first publisher, I knew that he had a table at the Associated Writing Programs, you know, annual conference, which is a huge conference, and that he would support me at that table, create readings to support the book, and so forth. Um, so that's why I went that that route, because again, working in the poetry industry, um, I know that if I have a traditionally published collection, mm -hmm. it will get a different kind of attention. Okay. It might be more liable to get reviews, which are really helpful. Um, and I wanted that kind of attention. I wanted right. that level, that check, you know, about the book. Yeah. And that's not to say that self-publishing isn't an avenue for people. And it can be. And I'm all for, you know, you got to figure out what works for you. But right. that's that's the route I went in. Because, like I said, I, I, I knew how others would look at it. And I knew I wanted it to be eligible for post-publication right. prizes. Right which are very different than publication prizes. Right. And so your objective, your objective kind of kind of guided you on which which routes you were going to take and from, from your objective there to get that kind of recognition you knew you had to play in that circle. So very right. interesting. And we're going to come back to that topic about the marketing aspect of that cuz I, I think that's that that was a question that came from the group as well. So let's let's hold off on that cuz we're going to hit that that came up from the group. Now, that's one end of the spectrum. Um, Terry's very experienced, has, has had a lot of, uh, obviously she's working in that field uh, professionally for a while now. So that's one end of the spectrum. Welby, on the other hand, he's just getting started. So, so let's hear from Welby um, this time and, and hear where he's at with his journey. So Welby, why did you decide to publish this book and you know, what's the route you're taking with regards to publishing and why? Um, so, um... I always want to write a book years ago. As a matter of fact, when I was in college, uh, when I took English comp 111, first English, English class at University of Akron, and we just write papers. And so one paper we was allowed to write about anything we, we want, about anything we wanted to. Mm -hmm. so I wrote about the time that me and my buddy, Mac, we all went to Virginia Beach, the uh, Black Beach, <laughs> Beach Party, and we stopped at Howard, and then we ended up going to Beach. I wrote, I wrote about that whole trip. Oh, wow. Submitted, and my professor like, what's your major? I said, uh, and at that time, my major was computer science. I was a tr traditional college student. I changed my major like four times, but, <laughs> but uh, I said, well, computer science, he said, oh, you need to be an English major. You need to be a writer. I said, man, I ain't, I'm not into that. I'm not doing that. But I always wanted to write a book. I, mean, I, I don't know if you guys know, I was born visually impaired because you're legally blind. And after I got out of college, my first job was working back at the University of Akron, working with at-risk youth and adults okay. who, who was receiving public assistance and they was in this program at the university where you either help them get a job, get them skills, get a job, or you help them get the skills up and get, get enrolled in college. And I ended up working there for like three years until they lost the grant. So I ended up working for this other company. It's called Jobs for Ohio Graduates. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's a part of the national organization called JAG, Jobs for American Graduates. And I work with at-risk youth to help them find jobs. And I worked there for 14 years, but my eighth year working with the company, 
it was time for me to go because I didn't like where the program was going and me and the director weren't getting along. And so I started applying for jobs. And so when I would apply for jobs, they would ask, give me scenarios on how would you do this situation? I'll tell them how to do it. They was all excited. I could just tell like, oh yeah, I, I can get them to get this job. And it always got to the question where they already asked me, is there anything about you that you never, you didn't tell us that you'd like to share? So I tell them, I said, well, I'm considered legally blind. I don't have a driver's license, so I won't be able to drive. But it, that should never affect me by doing the job. The whole, it was, and I talk about this in the book, it's, it, was, it was just like playing the game Pac-Man, when you get everybody to go, in my mind, it go, game over. So wow. I, and that would always happen. Then I would, I'm, I was affiliated, at the time I was affiliated with like the vision service for the vision impaired here in Ohio, mm -hmm. which is a state agency to help blind and vision impaired people get jobs, get in school, things like that. So I would talk to people like me and they go through the same thing. So I said, I'm gonna write a book about it. So now fast forward to maybe about two years ago. So my girlfriend, she's talking about this program at Georgetown University. And uh, it's called the uh, Creators Institute. Mm -hmm. And so what it is, is a, a program that Georgetown offers is a free program. And in this, in this course, you write in a book from day one, you interview with the professor, he see if, it's, if, it's, if your topic is a good fit, he give you an assignment. And from that point on, you write a book, you, you actually come up with your, your final manuscript. And if it's a good book, then they put you on with their publish their, their nonprofit publishing company, which is called New, De New Degree Press. And they they help you get publish your book through the process. Wow. Um, I love it. I always want to write a book. And I'm and I, I'm gonna start doing this for the rest of my life. I mean, I, I know it. It's just, it just you got the bug now. Yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and I know the other other authors are getting contest. I mean, you it's like. It's like a drug, to be honest. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like, it's in your soul. And, and there's some pitfalls. I know we're going to talk about that later on, but it's some pitfalls here too. But the pitfalls do not overweigh the reward. And right. I mean, I'm dead serious. And, and like my professor said, everybody has a story. Yeah. Everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so that, I decided to write a book because I want, I want my book. My book is basically geared to business owners, business executives, HR professionals, so they can learn the benefits of hiring people who are blind and vision impaired. And also the diversity and inclusion they'll get within their company because you can get a whole different perspective because us people who are blind and vision impaired, what people don't realize, we have to navigate through a world every day that's not set up for us. Right. So if we can do that on a regular basis and be successful on top of that, we can do anything we want to just give it, all we need is the chance, so. Amen, amen. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that. And that that's, I mean, whatever it sparks you, man, and, and, and that professor seeing that in you, you know, and turning that on to you. And now you realize that, you know, you had a gift there and now you had a mission after going through the experiences that you had. So that's that's a blessing to do that. Tiffany, Tiffany Tichi is our, our third Actually, yeah, our third author I, I'd like to introduce. And Tiffany, I'm going to ask you the same question. Why did you decide to publish a book? And did you do the self-published route? And why? All right. So good evening. Thank you so much for having me. This is a great opportunity just to share our journeys of the publishing world. And so I am an engineer <laughs> by trade. I'm a mechanical engineer. And so I'm always asked to go and speak to the kids and tell them what they could be as far as engineering <laughs> and different careers in science, technology, engineering, math. And so when I go talk to the kids, a lot of them have never met an engineer. And so from that, I've always asked them, I showed them, and then at the end, now you can say you've met an engineer. And so that's what sparked me to say, okay, I've got to put it in writing. Right. And so I've always wanted to write a book, but I didn't know when or what. But I knew that STEM was my passion with science, technology, engineering, math. Um, I'm a STEM advocate, um, be it that I love encouraging kids to see themselves in it. So I said, why don't I put it in writing? And so ironically, in 2019, there was a Facebook um, challenge that I saw. Her name was Crystal Swan Bates, a book coach. And she said, how you can get a five-day challenge to self-publish your own book, to get your own book, best-selling book. So I was like, okay, let me see what this is about. And so from that, I learned the process of what it takes to publish a book 
and the sky's the limit. So I went the self-publishing route. I mean, I've learned the process of getting an illustrator, getting the book team together and working as a team and knowing that I had the input to be able to make those changes. And so that's the route I decided to go because at the time, that's what was shown to me <laughs> as the option. And I said, okay, well, maybe this is my time. And so my time was there. And so Christmas Day, I found out I was number one international best-selling in STEM education. So it just makes your day. And we'll get into it of being that author and seeing the, 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 the fruits of the labor of what you put in with your books. And so um, I'm excited to share more. But yeah, that's really why I decided to go into um, writing the book. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. And, and what I could say uh, also is really, you know, there's a fourth uh, writer on this panel today, <laughs> and that's me. Um, you know, much like Tiffany is uh, alluding to there, uh, or very direct about, is her love for STEM and educating children in that. Uh, myself also share that same passion. And uh, in fact, uh, I write uh, under the pen name of B. Edward Swift, and uh, I write the AHA Jones children's book series. And AHA Jones is a very STEM-oriented uh, character, children's book character, whose the whole mission was to increase awareness and um, just uh, allow children to be exposed to more STEM uh, at an early age. So, so I can definitely share Tiffany's passion on that and how, how I started on that. Uh, actually, the idea for AHA was um, embarrassing, probably embarrassingly, probably 10 years old before I actually did something about it. Um, I had the idea in probably 2000 or something. And uh, when I was in my master's program, I had to do a project. And, you know, for that project, I said, hey, this is something I always wanted to do. So I have to do a project. So might as well do something that's uh, re rewarding to me and uh, also could give back um, to uh, an area that I was passionate about. And so that's what kind of pushed me, you know, down that path. So, and much like she's alluding to there with the team, you know, I knew it was going to be probably difficult to push myself through that. Uh, at that point, I didn't have any kids or anything. So I leveraged people around me that uh, shared a passion for youth and uh, they could provide some insights on what things uh, really connect with uh, the youth, uh, that target group that I was working with. And, uh, and, and that's how we got it done. So it takes a village sometime and that's okay. All right. All right, so we're going to keep it moving and go to the, the next question, okay? And, and it's getting into that, those pitfalls, I think, is what, uh, what uh, Welby was talking about. So let's circle back to Welby a little bit and see what he was talking about with regards to what was the most, what's the most difficult part of that publishing journey. So um, I, don't, I don't want to interrupt, but we have some questions out there. Um, okay, well, we can, we can get to those questions at the end if we have time. Um, okay. I'm going to give the opportunity to um, to do a rapid fire if we have time for that. And if not, I'm going to tag everybody in the session so that they have an opportunity to respond to some of the questions that are posted. Okay. That's right. fair. I'll let everybody just heard that. So thank you. Uh, so to your question, some of the pitfall. So I'm going to say this. So I was going to write my book anyway, but I don't know when I was going to do it, but I was going to do it anyway. And what I have learned that if I had write, wrote my book on my own, and I, let's say I started when this program started, I know for a fact there is no way I would be where I'm at today with my book if I had just sat down and said, I'm going to write this book. Because I learned so much with this program that it never really crossed my mind. So I think the difficult, one of some of the most difficult things that I, I, I experienced, and like I said, it's difficult, but it doesn't overweigh the reward. You get writer's block, let's be honest. I've got tennis elbow <laughs> through the process, type it every day. And I never had no tennis over my life. I'm, I went to the doctor and he was like, what you be doing? I said, well, I type at work and I'm writing a book when I get home. Oh, that's, that's what it is. So I got that. Then in December, I got COVID. Mm. Didn't know I had COVID, thought I had bronchitis. So I'm sitting on the, on the computer talking to the professor. Like, he's like, what's wrong with you? And it, I was so sick that I didn't even care. I showed up in a robe on a Zoom call. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, man, you sick. Just go to sleep. I said, no, I got to do this stuff. I need to do information. 
So I think some of my pitfalls is just remain in focus. You know, you got to find time when is when is your brain best function. For me, I'm a morning person. Okay. But Monday through Friday, I'm at work in the morning. So I really can't, I did do work with my book at work. I'm going to be honest, but I had to find time that really I get hours. So every Saturday and Sunday morning, Saturday morning, I get up at 7.30. I just start, I start writing. Sunday, I get up, I do, I do a little, my little Bible study. Then after that, I'm, I start writing because I know by two o'clock, my mind is somewhere else. So I, I had to stop. So, but the difficulty is, is that just finding time to write, getting over writer's block and, and family, family and friends. I'm gonna just be honest, Fam, family and friends, they know you're writing a book, but they I guess they don't know what entails of writing a book or they don't take you serious that you're actually doing this. Even though it's all, all my stuff has been posted on my social media every day by, by through the process, but, and it's, it's almost like you, you feel guilty, you know, it's like, Oh dang! I could go to my pressure. Yeah, I could go to I could go to my friend, my cousin's party tonight. But if I go, I ain't gonna wake up tomorrow to be on my schedule. So I had to I had to really pick and choose of what's prioritized for me. And I and think and I guess yeah, I guess what helped me through the process is this book called Find Your North Star. I don't know if you guys ever read it. And in this book, I found that the Goodwill for seven dollars. I just picked it up and just started reading it at home. But it's probably one of the best books I ever read. Mm. And it 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 teaches you, we have, this book says we have two selves. We have a central self and a social self. The social self is the dominant. So that's the, that's you when you, when your buddies call, when you know, man, I ain't trying to go out, but I go out anyway, mm-hmm. or something like that. Your central self is like the quiet one who is really your true self. So it teaches you to flip the script. So I, I, when I learned to do that, my, I took myself out the game, out of everything but book and work for the majority of this time. I got a little more time now because I'm almost at the end. But when I was in the trenches and I had to do re, have work, and the other author can contest this, contest if you have a if you have an editor, you got write it, writing deadlines. I got to have so many words by this date, and it's not about like, oh, don't worry about it. My editor, I'm beyond. He was in my ass. I'm beyond. He he held me to a fire. We need 10,000 words today. You don't have half, you only have 5,000. What's going on? It's like, hey, no excuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 that's, and that's, that's the truth. And I think so the difficulties I have is just being, remaining focused and taking myself out of, out of the mix for a while. Those but I, I learned to do that through the process. Right, right. Terry, let's get a, a different perspective. You've been in, in the game for a while, right? And you, if you, you chose that path of seeking out, you know, that, um, that mainstream type of publishing route. What's the most difficult part of that, that journey? I mean, it sounded like you were blessed and, and, and they kind of found you. <laughs> but <laughs> well, the, the hardest part is, is, is like well be said, is getting, is writing. Okay. That's the hardest part. Um, okay. And, you know, I'm a mom of two. I have a 10 year old son, um, August Ellison. You can mm-hmm. figure out where those names came from. Um, and, and Zoe Elise, who's 12. And my husband's also a poet, a published poet. Our both our debut poetry collections came out the same year, about like a few months apart. Um, okay. Um, and he's a Kaveh Kahnem fellow, too. Um, and but the hardest part as a mom, like that's, there's a reason why my first book, my debut poetry collection didn't come out until 2016. Yeah. Um, I literally had to wait until I weaned my son yeah. so I could go away to write. I, it's hard for me to write at home because yeah. there's always somebody looking for mommy. Right. You know, if it's not the kids, if it's not the husband, then it's the cat or the dog, it's something. Right. And, and, or it's work. And like you will be, I, I know, I know that, you know, when a poem comes, you get, you just got to honor the muse when it happens. But for me, <laughs> yeah, it, it was getting yes, away. And in the first, like, and applying for residencies and fellowships are really key because they do put your name in front of other organizations and other okay. people who make those, who look at those awards and do all those things. But when I got a chance, when I was accepted in, to the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts, and I got a week away to write, I was so productive. And that is how I've generally gotten most of the poems that I've written and have published created. 
Um, you know, uh, my husband and I both got a, a fellowship for this place called the Hermitage, where they give you a house on the beach in Florida, um, you know, for like a week. And like we went this August for a week. Um, and and then like I went to this place called Hedgebrook in on an island, Whidbey Island off of the coast of Washington State. And I was there for two Straight weeks. Straight out of Hemingway, right there. I know it was like it was a cottage and it's just for women writers. So okay. Tiffany, I'm looking at you, Tiffany. <laughs> Just, just look up Hedgebrook. Trust me, it's worth it. It's like one of the best experiences I've ever had. Wow. And yeah, Got some jewels out here. <laughs> I, I, I am here. I am here to to praise the gospel of Hedgebrook and their radical hospitality. Because all I had to do was get there and write. And even once I got there, they gave me a check to cover my travel. And so for two weeks, I'm just there in a cottage with like four other women writers who I'm still close to. And whose other books, like, you know, Tracy Fuad's book just won a prize and, and Jacube's book won the Kaveh Kahnem Poetry Prize last year. And, you know, and it's like Gloria Steinem had been there and I'm, I'm in this cottage with like, I mean, any writer, did you, any woman writer you could think of, like, um, oh, I'm going to forget her name. The woman who played the head, oh gosh, in, in Black Panther, Dana oh my gosh but anyway she was in the cottage I was in like there's a little journal so you can check um and like so it's it's getting away and that's yeah. that's the key so yeah. going to Hedgebrook was was great going to um the community of writers up in, in Lake Tahoe in California I got a the Lucille Clifton scholarship to go there for a week and there was generative workshops where I got to work with Pulitzer Prize winning poets yeah. um and and it's the same with Kaveh Kahnem my first time going there in 1999 is what then preceded my very first published poem, which was in an anthology by um, Tony Medina and um, another poet. Who's, I'm just forgetting names tonight. But um, so it's it's getting away, and and, and because writing a poem, I, you know, it takes hours, and it yeah. takes months, and it takes years. Well, the interesting thing was, uh, <laughs> I used to write poetry too. We called it rap. <laughs> back in the day but uh as well be mentioned I was writing at work a lot of times I mean <laughs> it was so funny because that's that's where that it, it was an emotion that that hit you and I had to let it out you know even if it was you know just a little bit but those are some jewels that you were dropping right there Terry so hopefully Tiffany and Monique I know you're out there watching in the live I hope you guys Thea she's also out there and posted questions. I know they're all listening. So I'm going to keep it moving with a little bit slightly different angle on that question, Tiffany, for you. And um, how did how did you go about shopping for a publisher, you know, um, from the angle you went from? Well, I didn't go with the publisher. I'm self-published. So right. the piece okay. with self-publishing is you have to try to get your team. And when I say book team, that is once you got your writing, and I will say I was trying, let me put that plug in. I was trying to rhyme in mine, but I, the engineer in me was just like, I don't have time for this. Cause I was just like, uh, I gotta get this done. So I was trying to for mine. It's an alphabet book and it was just okay. not happening. So I, once I got done with that, um, the way it works is you go to upward.com or fiverr.com and get freelancers. Right. And so I got my illustrators from um, upwork.com for the quality of it. And that's where you put your, you have a budget. You tell them, this is my budget. This is what I'm working with. <laughs> and who can do it at this budget? And then from there, you do a test, test um, samples with them. And from there, um, you decide, okay, who can make it kid friendly? I had some great drawings that was done for the kids books, but some of them, I, I tested my friends who have kids and said, which one is, and so that was my focus group. <laughs> so uh -huh. I used them for the, for the focus group for kid friendly. And so from that, that's how I decided from who would be my illustrator. Then from there, you decide to get your book cover design, your book formatter and editor. So of course you got an editor you got to have for your words. And so mm -hmm. building that book team, staying in my, I've learned to stay in my lane. This is not what I do. And so working with a team, finding the right freelancers that can do it at reasonable price. Um, right. I think it's been what's been beneficial for me. So that's how I've tackled to get my book team from there. That's a great point. And I hope you guys are listening and taking notes. What she said was Fiverr.com and Upwork.com. Two mm -hmm. resources that I did not know about when I went on my publishing journey. I found a great illustrator, but I probably spent over my budget on what I should have on my illustrations at the time. So that that's a lesson learned for me. 
Um, also, someone asked about where do you find photos there? And, and I could tell by Welby's website, he knows about pexels.com. Um, pexels.com allows you to search for different types of photos by subject and type. And those photo, uh, photographers post those photos and you can buy them or, or you can get them for free. Terry, you have a, another suggestion? Yeah, there's, um, was it Shutterstock or iStock.com and Shutterfly, but also um, this I learned from a poet painter friend of mine, the Library of Congress mm. gives you access to, um, and there's the Art you know, it's the Art Institute of Chicago. You can actually surf, surf, um, search for photos and paintings that are part of the public domain now. Right. And right. that can lead you to, you know, well-known artists and their work. And it's now part of the public domain and you can use that too. So, um, because I was really, really searching hard for my cover for um, A More Perfect Union. Right. And, you know, I ended up making a cover. It's a whole thing. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, but I, I, I was really, really that. So I just want to put those resources out there that if yeah. you go to the Library of Congress and you can do searches through their um, photography archives and you can find stuff that's part of the public domain, which means awesome. that you can get it for free. Thank also, for I'm gonna add this, let me add this too. Yep. The thing about getting photos for the, your, your guy, your, your author, your community out there. Be careful in the photos because a lot of photos that's out there, you only use for a certain period of time. So if you publish in a book, then you, you that would be sued. I learned that through the process as well. So you can't just go because they be on like those with Giddy and all that type of stuff. I'm gonna use this photo. You gotta look at look at the, the fine print. They may say you only use this for a year and you publish a book for life, then you're gonna be liable at some point. Right. Good, good tip. Excellent tip. And also, shameless plug, if you need a photographer, for, <laughs> you can go to alumnimatters.com and search by photography and find you a photographer in your area, possibly that went to your school. So uh, use that resource as well. Or call right. Adam Stevens. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Adam Stevens, ABC, right here on the call. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, I'm going to keep it moving. Um, so one of the big questions and it's a question even for me, because um, how do you go about marketing the book? Anybody who wants to share, you know, their experiences, their tips on this. I'm going to leave this one open. Um, I love it. I, that was going to be my comment when you talked about pitfalls. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> you need to market for self-publishing. I mean, I know you had to market, market before you publish. Marketing okay. before it's important. And that was my lessons learned. So when you talk about marketing, that was going to be my comment. I just dropped the book and say, hey, here's my book. And then everybody started coming to me. You got to, and I was like, well, how do you get it? So you got to start marketing before you publish that book. And that's the key too. So that's published before, published during, published after. You're going to continue on. So that would be my tips. Let's make sure you publish, that you market before you publish that book. Um, and there's different ways to go about doing that. I mean, make sure you got your stuff lined up. You can get a website, get all that done um, and pre-orders. Like there's different ways you can try to market as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm, so our first day, I mean, not the first week. So the first week we started writing things, like the second week we really started writing something. We came to class and our professor was like, all right, so your first marketing assignment is to go on all your social media platforms and add that you're an editor and your book is going to publish, if, like mine is in December 2021. That's the first marketing thing you do. Then write a post about you being being you being an author and what your book about and share it with your social media. And then so we we market, like you said, day one, I, I had probably wrote the first thing I wrote was basically why I want to write this book. That was the first piece I wrote for the book. And that was about I think 1500 words, I think at the time. But you 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 are author now. So you you put it in the atmosphere, you put it down, and then we had to do post. And then, and like one thing we did through our process is we we were, we we created Indiegogo fund to, to, to actually pay for like all my resources to publish my book. So I so I had I had a pre sale campaign, and through this campaign, I raised eight thousand dollars without from from that from from my pre sale campaign using Indiegogo. And what I did was we was marketing. I was on I was on 
my social, like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. And they kept saying, well, LinkedIn is going to be your re best resource. Facebook was my best resource. I had all types of cats I went to high school with, the college with, people I didn't even know, bought my book. And one of my classmates, I was Stacey Hodo, she ended up buying like, she gave me, she bought, I don't know how many books she bought, but I ended up getting like $3,000 from her alone. Wow. To help me with my campaign. And, and it like, marketing is the key. Like you, especially if you're self-publishing, don't just think you're going to put a book out there and people are going to come. Yeah. 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 Cause I, when I first, when I first met with, with my professor, I'll tell you what I write about. Then I met with my, my, my DE was, um, my, one of my editors, descriptive editor. And I was telling her, well, I'll write a book about me being vision impaired and stuff like that. And so her first question to me was like, okay, that's all good. Who know you? Who knows you to buy your book when it's done? I don't know what you mean. She said, you're not a celebrity. You just this guy from this little town, Akron, Ohio. One person from your town that people didn't know was LeBron James. Do you know him? I was like, I know his mom. That, that, that don't count. So, you know, so you have to create this, this, you create, create your story. You have to put your story out there and create this environment. And I had to write about a topic like being unemployed and hard to find jobs as a blind and visually impaired person and implement my stories into that topic. Right, right. That's what the topic is what's going to sell. And me marketing that topic is what's going to sell. So, and it's like stuff like this. This is a great marketing avenue for me. So I appreciate you guys putting me on here. So, but you really have to do the work. And I, and I even with you probably got to publish, you still got to do it on your own too, because yeah. they, they're going to do some things for you, but you still have to do things yourself. So, you know, but I, I think you really have to put yourself out there. And right. if you say you're an author, claim it, just say it. You know, don't have imposter syndrome, just be you. <laughs> if, that, if that's what you want to do, do it. And I, and I, I trust me. That was the hardest thing for me to do, to go on my social media page and say, I'm going to offer and have a book published in December. One, it only wrote one piece of paper. And then at that time, my editor hadn't even saw it. <laughs> so, right. you right. know, yeah. yeah. Let, let me ask oh. Terry. Let me ask Terry. Yeah. What's your, what's your, uh, it sounds like you've had an angle on this, but I'm, I'm curious to see which way you go with it. Um, well, again, like, because I've been in the, the poetry, like in, in Pobiz, as we call it, um mm -hmm. and running the series and meeting all these incredible like nobel prize winning poets and blah 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 for mm -hmm. over these years for me i knew i with my first publisher with javal press the fact that he had a table at awp which is the associated writing and writing programs conference the annual conference every year over ten thousand people go there and yeah. when it's ten thousand people it's it's normally english professors it's normally publishers. So you get to meet some of the great presses. You know, Norton has a table there, Copper Canyon, Four Way Books, um, you know, all these incredible presses that put out, you know, Grey Wolf, that, that put out incredible award-winning work. They normally rent a table there or even a booth. Um, and so I knew that that's a place I needed to be. And I knew that that was a plus that my first book publisher had a table there and he would set up events. But then the key for me um, is, is events. And because people are more willing to buy a book if they can get it signed by the author. And that, and, and I mean, I run a poetry series. So every reading, we have a bookseller. We have stacks of books. We have lines that go on throughout the entirety of the, the hall, like where I work at the Folger, at the Folger Shakespeare Library, you know, it was like a theater that seats like 300. And I mean, when we had events that we'd sell out and people would, and we'd sell out of books. Right. And so I knew it was about approaching bookstores to, for readings. It was approaching libraries for readings. And it was just about getting out there and getting heard. Now, the beautiful thing is having um, a university press, you know, they, we're really great at putting the press release out and dropping information. And, you know, of course I'm on the socials on Instagram um, and on, you know, and, and, and Twitter and, and, and LinkedIn occasionally and Facebook, of course. Um, and so it was also important to get that out there too, because whenever I have events, I try to publicize those events online and so that people can then attend. Um, mm -hmm. But the other, and then I will say too, with this book, 
which has been such a special, um, such a special experience to win a book prize. And, and for me, I also will say what's different too than self-publishing is I didn't put up, the only money I put up for any of this was contest costs. I, I never paid anything. I, I got honorariums from my first publisher and like the um, Charles B. Willer prize came with a $2,500 purse. And so I got so those that. costs were tax deductible, the, the contest costs. Yeah, that $30 here, that $30 there, that $25 there. Yeah. Oh, trust me. I went into submittable, <laughs> into my submittable account right. and pulled up everybody I put this, you know, this book in the contest with. Right. Um, but the other two is getting the work published in other places. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of poems in different anthologies. Oh, okay, right. And I have poems that were published, like the majority of A More Perfect Union, I think I probably have about five poems in that book that have not been published in a journal somewhere. Okay. Or in, a, in an anthology somewhere. Mm -hmm. So the more that my name is out there and people are reading, oh, Terry wrote this poem. Oh, this, this A More Perfect Union. Oh, this poem suggests revolution. That's her, I saw this here. That's what I want. I want people to begin to know and connect my work with my name yeah. and begin to get excited about the idea that there might be a new poem coming. And, and, it, and it helps. Like I came back to Cleveland and did, a, um, there was a, the Cleveland Draft Festival. And that was instrumental because from there, I met a great professor at Hiram and I just visited her class and they read my book, which meant they all had to buy the book to read it. And I like, you know, that's what it's about. <laughs> look, it's all about those meet and greets. I've gone to universities virtually since this book has come out. And then I was, I also end up um, having, hiring additional publicists. Two black women came to me and said, Hey, you know, we'd like to promote your work. And, and so I thought about it, thought deeply. I was like, do I really want to put some money into publicizing? It has been, they have been awesome. And I have gotten, you know, I, I, I've gotten all these gigs because yeah. of them, because they've been putting my name out, you know, whether it's a podcast here or, uh, you know, a central focus here, or, you know, this magazine is going to do a feature here. It's, right. that's the kind of stuff that begins to file in because you have to continue to push and put your name out there. And that's so true. Yeah, so, and now, yeah. now I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna tap into a couple things you said and share um, some experiences of my own. When you talk about um, going to events, you know my biggest selling days were um, the Ohio University Black Alumni Reunion, selling out. You know on that weekend, um, doing book events during that weekend, um, Essence Music Festival. Uh, having a table there for two hours and selling out and you know there's so what 200,000 you know attendees to the Essence Festival and just that kind of exposure and, and to Terry's point you know those expenses for those events are tax deductible conferences mm -hmm. I, I, I show up when I was in uh, Tennessee I, uh, I found out that the National Librarians Conference was going on in Birmingham drove down there set up shop <laughs> and start right, making right, connections right. right so um yeah definitely look for those writing events that are going on in every region look for those festivals in your area you can even um connect with other writers and share tables together um local events unc charlotte i've done stuff there and also the schools and things like that because i write children's book um so uh, through my church as well. We've had uh, book fairs at my church as well. Oh, shoot. The Atlanta Book, Atlanta book Festival was another one of my big ones. Uh, Southwest Atlanta um, Book uh, Festival. So annually. So yeah, take advantage of those opportunities um, for sure. I got, I I speak, got one more. Can I, well, I was going to say with the, going to the fairs and doing all that, social proof is important. So I'm always about taking my pictures everywhere I go. So when you talk <laughs> about going, taking those, it's something about having those pictures with those kids and seeing them inspired, having those opportunities. So when you talk about the marketing piece, you got to have proof. You got to have your social proof. And so that evidence. part of it's important yeah, too. So I just want to put that out there. And I'm going to say one more thing as far as marketing. If you, if you are alumni of university, go to your alumni association. I mean, I went to mine and they, they about to put me up some departments. I'm hopefully you can buy my book for, for, for a class. Be required reading. Yeah. So, your alumni associate, they want stories about alumni positive things that you're doing. So I don't care if you didn't even finish, just so you went there. Hey, they 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 they're gonna talk to you and give you opportunities. 
Right. Absolutely. And, and reviews are important too. Um, when you're talking about marketing, I want to put that out there too. Mm -hmm. Try to get some positive reviews, testimonials, like yeah. all of that is key when you're talking about marketing as well. So I have to put that out there is what's important too. So. Yeah. And, and you can do reviews on alumnimatters.com in, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I would say one of the first things I, I asked my husband to do when, you know, Hank showed up on Amazon and I knew my publisher, that was another thing too. I also researched about my publishers, like where would he have my books available? And this is, right. this is with the first book, with the, with the university press, you know, it's a whole different game. They have a lot more avenues. Um, but it was, I, I wanted friends to go and review the book on Amazon and give it a good review but then too and, and it's like I'm working with another friend I'm in I'm in a collective of black women poets called black ladies brunch collective mm -hmm. we actually put out an anthology that Baltimore called the best of 2017 hello we took oh. it to we took it to <laughs> Ireland sold out in Limerick who knew Word. um uh, so Word. but yeah but it was about it's it's about those reviews are really crucial Yes, um, and I was just talking to another friend about, you know, her new, her debut collection is coming out and we we're just talking about, you know, where to get those reviews. So this is where those groups on Facebook, like I'm part of this black binders group where it's black women writers and boy, you know, you put black women in your group, you know, we do things. That's um, right. <laughs> black girl <laughs> magic. You know, <laughs> they don't play on yeah, black yeah. binders. They, every day somebody's like, oh, I'm doing this thing and I'm doing this thing. And yeah. it's like, hey, wow. <laughs> That's um, so true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that's how I got on a podcast, you know, a different podcast, Right. And, you know, and so I, I was just about to say that Terry, I, I think what people don't realize who, who's not in the author community, how you get on New York Times bestseller, it's not really about the content of your book. It's about the sales. It's about the responses you get like on Amazon, the comments people make. So like one thing I'm going to do when my book come out, I'm having a book event and I'm going to offer my, my, my audible book for 99 cents. So I might just have you get the book for 99 cents and then write a comment. That's how you get the reviews. That's how you get New York Times bestseller. That's how you like podcasts. People get you called on the shows. These people may not read your, read your book, but they see that, oh, this book is selling. This is somebody we want to talk to because it's a popular item. Yeah. It, I had a, yeah. And that's one thing I, I just learned this year since being in this program. So, you know, and I went to a couple of my co-authors books already published like in August. I was just saying they had great events and everybody bought the book for 99 cents and said something, give it five stars and stuff like that. And just one girl has a top selling children's poetry book that just new releases just ca came out in the first week. So it, wow. Yeah. Wow. Look, I, I'll tell you how you get on the New York Times bestseller. I have a good friend who uh, just got on the New York Times bestseller list because Oprah picked her book. Okay. Amen. You get Oprah. You get Amen. Oprah. Picture, but Amen. The love song of W. E. B. Du Bois. Pick it up. Honor uh, hey, I think that's every author's dream for Oprah to read it. <laughs> I know, right? You know. It, really, it really is. And you know, to get you her know. stamp of approval <laughs> means a lot. All <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. Now I'm gonna ask Fred to go to the chat real quick and see if he has something. But Fred, I wanna I wanna leave these guys time to close out and plug their books before we wrap up. But we'll take what what do you have any good questions there, Fred, in the chat that, that I have some Swift. I have some. We have uh what's this one is a what is the name of that Georgetown program? That'd be Welby. It's called Welby, that's for you. I'll tell you the exact name. Uh, the Creators Institute. If the Creators to, Institute? Yeah. If you go to, just go to LinkedIn and type a Creator Institute or Eric Coaster. And it's Coaster spelled K-O-A-S-T-E-R. It's called the Creators Institute at Georgetown University. And actually, his advisor just sent me something last week. They're looking for people to sign up for this fall's course. Uh, the fee is $500 to get in the program. But at that point, you get everything you need. They tell you what, you know, they, you get all the, and that includes that for all your editors and everything else as well. It's a great business. program. And once you're in the program, you're in it for life. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The yeah. next question we have is, I think it's for you, Swift, or Brian. What's the pen name for the AHA Jones books? Uh, B. Edward Swift. Uh, B. Edward Swift and it's Aha Jones. I have the Adventures of Aha Jones, and I have um, New School. I mean, I have New School Blues, and I have uh, Aha's Dentist Visit. And much like Terry was alluding to, to since the twins came along, I have a third one on deck. 
but it hasn't <laughs> moved yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right and then we have another question i guess this could be for any other you offer what was the process of getting uh editor for your book i don't know if we i can't remember if we touched on that or not but well, just briefly through her publisher right? yeah, yeah. But the, the, Fiverr for yeah me. for the first book i had to make sure everything was all set because he he did not have an editor on staff Okay. But for the second one with Ohio State University, they have an editor on staff. So that was well be through his program. Yeah, we and yeah. and, and I, I mean Terry might she more experienced than I am. I know, and there's different types of editors you want to have too as well. So you know, like now I'm dealing with I'm, I'm in a phase where I'm dealing with my MRE, which is a marketing revision editor. So he doesn't, he's not there to critique, like, does this make sense? Does it flow? He's there basically to make the finished product. So he's all about restructuring, like the and, and that all the, both of them can contest. When you write a book, you you might have a format that you want to write it in. It might you write it this way. When your editor touches, it, it's like, no, this don't make sense to me. Let's move this paragraph here, right? And move this here. And, you know, and you and then they ask what you think. It's still your decision, but those are experts and they're telling you how you do it. So from what you wrote to what you get. It's like a whole different process, but right. and each editor does different things. Like I have an acquiring editor that I never met because they don't want her to, her to, they didn't want her to create a relationship with you. She, she just goes and critique it because she don't want to, she don't know you personally, or she know what you write, which right. is great. But if you got, you got to have tough skin too, as a writer too, with editor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that <laughs> because they, they, they don't sugarcoat, which yeah. I loved it. But also, I was mad a lot of days. Feelings is hurt. One day, I took my trans, my manuscript that I had on my desk. I ripped it up and shredded. I said, "The hell with this." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good thing I typed. I saved it. But I, you know, this. But it's cool. But you want that. You don't yeah. want that yes person. You know. If you go through self publishing, and Tiffany, you can probably uh, chime in yeah. too. They they usually have those resources as part of that team, right? Yeah, so the fiber.com, you can look for editors that way. The one I had, she's actually out of North Carolina, randomly I found. So you want somebody who understands because on those platforms, you can get, you can go all different ways. You can get uh, foreign, you can get uh, different ones, but definitely for the English standpoint, I had to make sure uh, for that. But for the illustrator, you can get a little cheaper cost. So, yep. So um, fiber.com. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, we're close to the top of the hour. I want to just thank Thank you all for really sharing your, your experiences and, and your knowledge um, with everyone here. I'm sure we, we've got some value in, and we probably can go on for a while longer with this. And I'm sure there's other questions. So don't worry, everybody. We're going to make sure this video gets posted. And what I'd ask if you have questions, go ahead and, and comment on the video and we'll, we'll try to get those questions answered for you. But uh, as a moment of thanks, I want to thank you all for participating. I want to give you all the opportunity to uh, plug your uh, book and say any final words. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Terry. All right. Well, I'll just read you the blurb. I got a blurb from an incredible poet named Tanya Bajess. Won the Pulitzer Prize for his book, second book, Olio. You should read it. It's incredible. Um, so this is a more perfect union. Um, if you know anything about America, then you know why I'd be fed, I'm fed up with this country. Um, and and uh, this is what Jess said about the book. He said, Terry Ellen Cross Davis has written a blood oath to black motherhood, to love's primal ecstasy, to the R&B royalty of Prince. Prince is all through this book. All prism through a season awareness that is international in scope and homegirl, homegrown in its vernacular and dizzying heat. A more perfect union is an urgent outcry, a galactic guitar riff of blues that echoes in the turmoil space between America's promise and the place where fear is always a whip or white lady calling 911. So here's my book. <laughs> I will come visit your class virtually. Um, I'll be in Ohio at Lit Youngstown as a featured reader for their festival from October 5th through the 7th. So please come through. I'll be reading on, on, the, on the Friday with Jan Beattie. Um, and, or no, with Bonnie Proudfoot, apologies. And... Um, yeah, I'll do virtual events, and if it's safe, I'll do in person if you pay to get me there. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. poetry, and I do workshops too. So, there you go. 
And we always shout, shout our alumni on alumnimatters.com. And that includes high school. And I know where you went. So let's go ahead and drop your alumni as well. Warrensville Heights High School. Come on. Come on, Gabriel. <laughs> I've been tapping them to bring me back. Bring me back. Bring me back. <laughs> All right, Tiffany. All right. So I will show them. I don't know if we can see it. Oh, I got it blurred out. Um, but put it in front of your face. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. What can I be STEM careers from A to Z? It's a children's book that's been great. Um, and let me, I meant to tell everybody that I actually translated in Spanish, French, and Swahili. So it's in Swahili, having in Spanish, French, and Swahili. And then also a teacher's edition as well. And then also a color and an activity book. And so the sky's the limit. Um, check it out. My, my name is Tiffany with an I, Tichi. And you can go to TiffanyTichi.com. Um, it's on all the different platforms. But if you want autographed copies, come to my website. But you can also go to Amazon um, and all the other platforms to look it up. Uh, what can I be? STEM careers from A to Z. And as stated, I actually, with the self-publishing piece, if somebody's already at the point where they're ready to get to the publishing part, want to do that, they can also reach out to me for that as well. Um, I am going to have a publishing agency to help put a publishing piece of it. Um, once again, TiffanyTeachy.com. Thanks. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you. And Welby. Yeah, my, yeah, my book is um, Leading Blind Without Vision. I'm going to give you a stat. This is on no matter what's going on in the economy, blind and vision impaired people have a 70% unemployment rate all the time. So that's one of the reasons why I wrote this book. So my book will be published this December. So if you know somebody that's an HR professional, business owner, uh, business executive, or even somebody who's teaching at a college like in human resources or business, this might be a great Christmas gift for you to buy them. Um, also with my book, I'm gonna do trainings and seminars, speaking engagements and things like that. So you can reach my website, which is broadestbizsoul.com. That's B-R-O-A-D-D-U-S-B-I-Z-S-O-L.com. So look, look me up if you are, if you really care about helping somebody and make it, you know, the biggest topic, diversity, equity, inclusion. But when people talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, they always forget about the person that's buying a vision pair or pretty much anybody with a disability for that matter at all. So include us as well, because we are a great asset to any company. All right. Excellent. Excellent mission. Uh, excellent book. Um, and we're, we're just so thankful to have you all. I'll, I'll do one more plug here. Uh, as I mentioned, I am also a writer. Um, the Adventures of Aha Jones by B. Edward Swift. This is New School Blues. And we also have uh, Aha's dentist visit. Aha is eight years old. He's um, very interested. He wants to be an astronaut. He's very interested in all things STEM. And there's learning activities within each book that can extend the child's learning. So check me out. I'm on Amazon. I'm also on alumnimatters.com as well. All of these authors are on alumnimatters.com. So check them out there. You can also join our alumni circles group on Facebook if you haven't already. And you'll, we'll have more programming and content like this coming to help um, just add value to the community. Uh, we're so thankful for the authors and we're so thankful to have you here um, watching us this evening. Uh, Shout out to my partners uh, from the Alumni Advantage Group, uh, Fred Cash Jr. Uh, and Adam Stevens from the technology team working through um, this uh, live feed. And thank you all for your support. Remember, celebrate, support, and do business together. AlumniMatters.com. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's thank great, you, great, man. Yeah. <laughs>